The East Coast's playground of sun and sand has transformed overnight into a stage for nature's raw fury. In Ocean City, Maryland, and the fragile outer banks of North Carolina, beaches once filled with laughter now echo only with the roar of crashing waves. This is not a typical storm. This is Hurricane Aaron, the first major hurricane of the season, a monster that leapt from a tropical storm to a Category 5 powerhouse in just one day. How did it grow so fast? And why are its waves striking hundreds of miles beyond its core? Hurricane Aaron did not arrive quietly. What began as a restless swirl of clouds near Cape Verde exploded into a storm system that stunned meteorologists across the globe. In less than 24 hours, Aaron transformed from a tropical storm into a Category 5 monster, packing winds of 160 miles per hour and a circulation spanning more than 500 miles. It was no ordinary hurricane. It was a record breaker one of the fastest strengthening storms ever observed in the Atlantic. Though it would never make direct landfall on U.S. soil, Aaron's sheer size made it impossible to ignore. From Florida to New England, the ocean began to rise, beaches vanished under the surf, and forecasters warned this storm would test the East Coast like never before. The first to feel Aaron's wrath were the fragile sands of North Carolina's outer banks. Protective dunes crumbled like paper walls, swallowed by storm surge that surged across Highway 12, the lifeline of the barrier islands. Entire stretches of road vanished beneath seawater, cutting off communities and forcing evacuations in the dead of night. From there, Aaron's reach extended north, Along the coast of New Jersey, the ocean turned violent. Breaking waves towered more than 17 feet, slamming into protective dunes that collapsed under the assault. Streets in Atlantic City, Margate, and Ocean City became rivers, while relentless surf destroyed sea defenses rebuilt only months earlier. Farther north, New York and New England felt the sting of Aaron's circulation. Lifeguards cleared beaches as deadly rip currents tore through the Atlantic. Ferries to Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard were canceled, stranding travelers as gusts over 40 miles per hour whipped across the islands. Even the Chesapeake Bay and Virginia's tidewaters could not escape. Water levels climbed well beyond normal cycles, flooding coastal highways and carving deep scars into barrier beaches. Scientists watching from afar were stunned. Even hundreds of miles from its eye, Aaron was reshaping the shoreline, dragging sand offshore, redrawing maps overnight. It was nature, unchained, a storm so vast that the ocean itself seemed to rise at its command. For the people living along the East Coast, Hurricane Aaron was not just a weather event it was a test of survival. In North Carolina's Outer Banks, entire neighborhoods were forced to evacuate. Families packed into emergency shelters as Highway 12 disappeared underwater. Tourists who had come to the islands for summer vacations found themselves trapped, their carefree holidays turning into desperate escapes from rising seas. Local authorities raised double red flags, banning anyone from entering the ocean as rescue crews prepared for the worst. In New Jersey, the situation grew dire. Governor officials declared a state of emergency as waves battered the shoreline and floodwaters poured into towns. Firefighters in Atlantic City waded through chest-deep water to rescue motorists stranded in stalled vehicles. In Margate, Restaurant patrons had to be carried to safety when waves broke through streets and surged into dining halls. Residents who had rebuilt after previous storms now watched helplessly as their efforts were erased in a single night. New York and New England saw closures ripple through daily life. Popular beaches were shut down, ferry services to Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard suspended. Businesses along the waterfront shuddered as strong gusts and dangerous surf made normal activity impossible.
For many small towns dependent on summer tourism, the storm dealt a devastating economic blow. Even far to the south in Puerto Rico, Aaron's winds toppled power lines and left tens of thousands without electricity. Families endured long nights in darkness, relying on generators and candles as emergency crews scrambled to restore service. Meanwhile, in Virginia and the Chesapeake Bay region, tidal flooding swept across coastal highways, forcing drivers to abandon cars. Military trucks rolled in to help evacuate stranded residents, a stark reminder of how vulnerable even inland communities can be when the ocean rises. From city streets turned into rivers, to families sleeping in shelters, to tourists stranded far from home, Aaron's impact was felt not just in statistics, but in human lives suddenly thrown into chaos. It was a reminder that while storms are measured in wind speed and surge height, their true weight is carried by the people left to endure them. Scientists were stunned by Aaron's explosive growth. In just one day, the storm leapt from a tropical system into a Category 5 powerhouse, fueled by record warm waters of the Atlantic. Ocean temperatures several degrees above average acted like jet fuel, supercharging winds to 160 miles per hour and expanding Aaron's circulation until it stretched more than 500 miles wide. But the storm's size was just as alarming as its strength. Even as its core remained offshore, Aaron's outer bands generated pounding surf and rip currents from Florida to New England. Beaches, hundreds of miles from the eye of the storm, faced dangerous waves, a reminder that modern hurricanes are no longer confined to narrow paths of destruction. Meteorologists warned, Aaron was not just a storm of the season, it was a glimpse of storms to come in a world of warming seas. At its peak, Hurricane Aaron revealed the full scale of its fury. Breaking waves soared to nearly 17 feet, crashing over protective dunes and erasing barriers that had stood for decades. In the Outer Banks, seawater tore across Highway 12, swallowing entire lanes and leaving gaping holes where asphalt had once carried tourists along the coast. In New Jersey, streets became torrents. Families waded through waist-deep water as firefighters struggled to keep up with emergency calls. Videos showed diners rescued from flooded restaurants, while stranded motorists clung to rooftops of their cars, waiting for help. Puerto Rico endured a darker battle. Tens of thousands of homes plunged into blackout as power grids collapsed, leaving communities cut off from communication and light. The night sky glowed only with flashes of lightning, illuminating neighborhoods drowned in silence. Even far-reaching places like New England felt Aaron's grip. Ferries canceled, beaches closed, and gusts howled across the islands as if the ocean itself were roaring in defiance. This was Aaron at its fiercest, not just a storm, but a force of nature tearing through lives and landscapes alike. As Aaron weakened over the Atlantic, its legacy lingered. Long period swells continued to hammer fragile coastlines, stripping sand and accelerating erosion. Communities that had fought to rebuild after past storms now faced the grim reality that the ocean was advancing, one storm at a time. Meteorologists issued their warning clearly. Aaron was not an isolated disaster. It was a glimpse of a future shaped by warming seas, where storms intensify faster, grow larger, and reach farther than ever before. The East Coast will recover, but the scars remain, on beaches, on cities, and on the people who lived through the chaos. Aaron will be remembered not only as a storm, but as a wake-up call from the ocean itself.